Hey guy from New Plastic and today we're gonna do something nice for our grandkids and do some weaving. First off, since I don't have any sponsors for these videos, I guess I'm sponsored by my own online store. So let me take a second to tell you about my fabulous new procedural fabrics packs, 11 different packs of fully 100% procedural fabric materials. We got the weaved pack, we got the knit pack, we got suits, leather, satin, velvet, apparel, cheer and more or you can get them all in one pack your choice the cool thing about them is that they're so customizable that in a few clicks you can just make a whole new material also they're infinitely tileable with no repetition and you can render them at 24k resolution and they won't break so yeah if you use octane for cinema 4d and feel like you need them go buy them hopefully they will help you a lot in your work and that's definitely a way to support the channel beyond that if you want one of my enamel pins you can buy them at the other gumroad store i'll leave the links to both in the description if you want to support further consider becoming a patron or a member you'll get access to these project files free products and other cool perks but mostly help me make more and better content for y'all follow me and the channel on instagram at ojang and at brand new plastic subscribe comment like share mix your own perfumes it's super easy just mix a bunch of essential oils with perfumers alcohol and some emulsifiers never mind let's go So let's start from a flat surface so we can understand what's happening more clearly. Universal material on the plane, BRDF mode to STD, and most of the work here will be done using an OSL script. So let's add an OSL node, and the script I got from this GitHub called 3D Max OSL Shaders, but don't worry, it works fine in cinema. It's created by Zap Anderson, so shout out to him. I'll put the link to this in the description. So over here, click on raw, and then you can just copy the whole thing. Go back to cinema, paste it into the OSL node, and hit compile. And would you look at that, a whole ass weave node. Before we start, there's something in the code I want to edit, and it will be very easy, so don't freak out. Let's full screen it. And if we scroll down, you can see all the attributes of the weave here. Most of them are clamped, but this frizz scale, for example, isn't clamped. So the numbers go crazy, and it'll be very hard to use the sliders to adjust it. So real easy. Here's the line for the frizz scale. We're gonna copy this line here that clamps the values and simply paste it under the frizz scale line and change the max value to maybe 20. Then do it again under the bendiness scale. And I think we're good. Now hit compile again, but oops, it's telling us syntax error because I forgot to remove the comma after the line. So just delete the commas after both lines, hit compile and we're good. Now let's plug it into the albedo and solo it and we see nothing. First off, we need color. So let's grab two RGB nodes and plug them into the U and V color over here. Now let's plug a projection node to the UVW plug and just leave it at mesh UVs. Now let's up the scale a little bit. And once we start upping the width, there you go. So you see the width changes the width of each thread. The scale, oh, the scale isn't clamped either. So let's go to the code again and clamp the scale line like we did before. Scale is right here. So paste, let's max it at 20, hit compile. And it looks like 20 is too high, let's clamp it at two. Okay, this is a good range. So you see the scale obviously scales the whole thing. Width changes the scale of each individual thread. Changing the roundness, you won't see anything yet. Roundness bump doesn't do anything, so don't worry about it. But changing the roundness shadow, now you can start to see how we're getting this kind of bulging effect on the threads. The bump won't affect it, but the roundness and roundness shadow are connected, so make sure you change both. They're doing the same thing, but both need to be turned on to get this bulging effect on the thread. Weave bump won't do anything, but weave shadow starts to introduce this shadow in between the threads, as if they're overlapping. Frizz adds noise distortion to each thread. Frizz bump doesn't do anything. And frizz scale changes the scale of the noise, so the smaller it is, the more detail the distortion will get. Bendiness introduces distortion that doesn't affect the width of each thread, but kind of smears and bends the whole thing. So again, changing the bendiness scale will change the amount of detail in the distortion. But as you can see, unlike frizz, it keeps the width of each thread uniform and distorts them all together. And opacity fade doesn't do anything. And the seeds changes the random seed of not the frizz, but the bendiness. 
Okay, so now let's actually create something. Let's add some bulging, add some weave shadow, add some subtle frizz distortion, subtle bendiness. And what I like to do is to add an octane noise and use it as color with a gradient node to add even more details to the whole thing. And let's plug it also to the V color using a UVW transform. And if we add a transform node, we can squeeze it and that will kind of fake these kind of microfiber threads. And let's rotate the second color 90 degrees. So I prefer them going perpendicular to the main threads. So let's rotate the original noise by 90. And there you go. Okay, let's change the scale and the width. And let's add a composite node with four layers. Let's plug the weave node into the second layer and plug the original noise into the first layer using a UVW transform. Let's hide the top two layers for now. Let's add a gradient node to the first layer. And since we can't control the color of these black parts in between the weaves using the OSL node, we're gonna fake it by using the bottom layer as the background color and using the OSL node to mask itself. So if I plug the OSL into its own opacity channel using a gradient node, and really crush the whites. We're basically masking out these black areas and revealing the bottom layer. And it's hard to see now, but if we change the colors of this bottom layer, you can kind of tell we're getting the purple color where the black squares were. Let's make this noise uniform by inverting the stretch on the Y axis. And let's add some color to the main threads. I'll copy this purple gradient and paste it into the main thread gradient. And let's make them brighter. Copy this one and paste it into the second threads. Add some subtle variation. And that's looking pretty good. You can see if I change the bottom to green, the green will pop out in between the threads. So that's good. We actually need to crush the mask even more now because we made the colors brighter. Okay, good. Let's plug the third layer in. Add another noise and change the blend mode to maybe darken. Crush it with a gradient node, add some detail to the noise. Mm, let's change the blend mode to overlay. Okay, I like that. Scale it back up and this just adds up more variation. It's all about the variation, baby. Break that shit up if you wanna make it look somewhat believable. Okay, plug the fourth layer in, and this time I'll add the scratches node from the custom patterns. I love this node. We can really fake some tiny fuzz fiber with it. First thing is change the seed to any number but zero. Very important. Scale it down, and just so you can see, if I leave the seed at zero, the pattern is super uniform for some reason. It could work for some stuff, but any other seed will break it up. Change blend mode to add, add a projection node and change it to distorted UVs. And let's plug this original noise to the translation plug and change the X to um, 0.15 and Y to negative 0.1. Okay, let's start working the rest of the channels on this material. To do that, I applied the material on this cloth model I had and was working on it and couldn't figure out why it was looking so weird till I realized the normals were flipped. So I had to start over. So here we are. First off, way too big. Let's scale the weave node down. Okay, this feels right. Let's also scale the noise of the microfibers down by a bit. Scale down the scratches node. Are we getting the third layer? Yes, we are. Scale it down a bit too. Oh, it's beautiful. Okay, plug the whole thing to the bump channel using a gradient node. And same with the specular channel. Let's bring both nodes in on the specular gradient and make the white way darker. So we're basically barely getting any specular. Let's duplicate this gradient, invert the nodes and plug it into the roughness channel. And let's make both nodes brighter. Okay, we're starting to get somewhere. Fiddle with the weave distortions. And we can add a displacement node, change to vertex mode, barely any height, check auto bump. And we're getting something. It's a bit too strong, so let's reduce the height even more. Okay, nice. Let's actually plug the bump gradient to the displacement and let's crush that gradient to make the effect a bit stronger. Okay, nice. Nice detail we got here. 
Let's duplicate this material and keep editing. Let's make the threads much thinner and reduce the frizz a little bit. Let's reduce some detail from the scratches node and let's check that the mask is good. What about this background color? Hmm, we can add a bit more detail here. Okay, I like that. Let's scale the whole thing down. Even more. That's really nice. We're starting to get almost like a burlap or a linen effect here. This looks really, really sick, honestly. Let's up the exposure so we can see better. Yeah, check that shit out. Love it. Okay, let's lower the opacity on the scratches layer. Man, all these variations are really working. Okay, I love this one. Let's duplicate it and try something else. Let's scale it back up. And what we could do is plug the weave node using a gradient node into the opacity channel. And if we really crush the whites and look at that, I mean, come on, man, what more do you want from me? We could probably keep experimenting by adding some subsurface scattering and whatnot, but let's stop here, save some for other videos, am I right? Okay, that's it for now. Check out the weave pack on my Gumroad or get the full fabrics pack if you feel like it. Check out the enamel pins, links in the description. Consider supporting on Patreon or membership and a brand new Mercedes to all my Hollywood babies. Yin and Gong, Gam Lopez, Dave Toro, Marie Robbins, Spoyas Chari, Eric Hu, Daniel Larry, Minky Kim, Hodder, Leo, Petter Odiger, Yun Ji Shin, Chris Hyde, Alda Boyd, Ferron Ferron, Katie Royal, Derek Fredrickson, Biko Sun, Ruby Nine, Lucas Renche, Tell Me More, Jaskirat Pandrath, Bori Jinkwan Wu, Eric Lofton, Bruno Arredondo, Cheki Aha, Domestic God in the House, Toby T, Farid Ali, David Lesser, Adam Trexler, 3D Monkey Biz, Arlen, Suki Violet Su, The 22 Design, Joel Rieger, Adrian Desolet, Derek Schultz, Marie Sickendorf, The Studi Image, Matus Jedrzejewski, Blue Hamel, Mark Reagan, Joshua Akoy, Punxsacornium Siri, Webb, Kong Idiot, Maddie DeGreldre, Choyun Jun, NZE, IMN, Golfino666, Ali Esser, Leandro Maramon, May, Baugasm, Shane, Perry Cooper, Hannah Kazeka, Oysen O'Brien, Joel Taylor, Fo Major, Kevin E. Quintero, Jeremy Bajana, Christina, Javola Tong, Yatsu, Raquel Vela, Ezekiel Grand, George, Alex Jean Yong Cho, Matessa Rakozi, Tequila Bedoya, Onur Kuroglu, Takeyuki Chiba, Pablo Reader, Sophia Wilton, David Hughes, Ramshad, Nick Davies, Kim Jae, Riverstar 2190, LSD Honey, Mons of Canada, and everybody else on the list. Thank you so much. I love you. Have a great day. Peace.